Today's day, innit? If you're new here, bumbling sailor, watched too much YouTube, thought I'd buy a boat, thought I'd get in on that action, it looked quite fun, didn't it? Um, it has been fun. Uh, so I bought this for three and a half grand. It's a 1968 Contessa 26. Um, that's got issues. I had issues, I fixed her up, I patched her up. Uh, on a wing and a prayer with some gaffer tape. All leading up to this, the day when I set off solo with zero sailing experience on a 500 or so nautical mile journey to get the boat home. Um, yeah, I was petrified. A little bit anyway. Uh, but I think I'm stupid enough that I wasn't scared enough. Is that a Dunning-Kruger effect? Anyway. Let's get into it then. So this is it. I'm not just randomly kicking my boat there, I'm just knocking the bow off a little bit to get off the dock. Because I think I've seen people do that. Um, where am I heading? So I'm setting off here from uh, New Haven, down on the south coast. And I'm heading to an anchorage in Bembridge on the Isle of Wight. Um, I think that's where I'm aiming for. I've sort of tried to time the tides right and stuff like that and the weather. But yeah, this is sort of the moment. There is a marginal amount of poo coming out. Sorry about that. And for reference, this is actually the very first time I've ever left the marina using the engine. Uh, I went out with the outboard a couple of times to practice some sailing. I've done about three or four hours. A chap called Rich at Sailing Miss came down and gave me a tiny bit of tuition. Uh, but yeah, this is the first time I've ever been on the boat on my own, leaving the marina. Or any boat on my own. Or any boat in general. That nice big uh, motor yacht on the right hand side, Grampus, just a couple of weeks prior to this somebody had reversed out of a slip and put up some nice big um, scratches down the side of it so I was definitely cognizant of that. We're out of the channel, heading past the uh, breakwater. So this lighthouse, I, when I first came looking at the boat I was in a little van. I used to see, there's a car park at the end and I would sit on there looking at the lighthouse thinking if I buy this boat one day I'll be setting off past that as I stare pensively at it um, and this is that day I can't believe it's actually happened if I'm honest with you I thought I sort of thought I was going to keep putting it off and putting it off but no I only bloody did it like I ain't got a clue what I'm doing. This is crazy. After a little bit of uh, faffery, it's time to get the sail up. So I don't have any wind instruments or anything like that. Um, just can't afford them. So basically, I don't know what wind feels like. I don't know how fast it is. And the only way I can know where it's coming from is to try and stick my face in it and feel it on both my cheeks. So yeah, I'm, uh, I'm playing things conservative. I've only got the jib, I've not got the Genoa on. Uh, my sails are hanged on, if you're new here. Uh, so this is me raising a sail on my boat for the first ever time. And there she blows. Um, so my plan is put a sail up, see what speed I'm doing. If I'm doing close to like the hull speed or whatever, or the boat feels all right, just leave that sail up. Um, So what actually happens today is that conditions were quite blowy. So I um, I put the headsail up on its own and thought, sod it, I'm going fast enough. I don't want to overpower the boat. 
you'll notice the leech of the sail which is like the back edge that goes up is flapping here and I kept messing for ages with the um, sheet where it turns out it was a leech tension um, cleat had come undone so yeah there we are doing a bloody sailing So here we go, sorry again about the audio, um, putting on the wind vane, I don't know what kind of wind vane it is and neither do people that I've spoken to, it might be some kind of homemade type effort but she works well and it's super simple, so it's in the two sections, one of them goes over the rudder um, stock over the top and the tiller actually goes through it so it becomes part of the rudder and that little sticky uppy bit there that you can see goes down to another little tag rudder sort of thing um, so what happens is the circular bit on the bottom of the windy bit has little teeth on it and you locate a pin in the teeth uh, to whichever angle you want to go to the wind uh, and that adjusts the tag rudder on the bottom which adjusts the main rudder uh, through magic and yeah, I actually put it on top of the little taggy thing, as you can see. I am not graceful. Um, and there she blows. I basically stayed on it all day. I think I've got the wind vane set up. It seems to be working. Oh. Man, it's sporty. It's definitely sporty. I think I set the 360 to get the front it on, but then I don't think I recorded, so... Uh, it's probably for the best because I just look like a flummoxing idiot hanging over the back of the boat. Uh, well, that's all pilot's off now. I need to do something about this noise. Uh, when the rudder comes over here. You hear it squeaking on that. Oh, man. I mean, it doesn't do it justice, but... It's definitely sporty. But the, uh... The head sail seems pretty straight there. I think I'm about as tight to the wind as I want to be. I'm about on course. Oh. I need to put a split fin in the top of it. I point to it, but I can't let go of the first <laughs> Shit in hell. <laughs> I'm good, I'm good. <laughs> this is awesome. Go 
inside to get out of the wind. As you can see, we're doing about four knots-ish on average. Uh, about eight or nine hours until we get to Burnbridge. It's very, <laughs> it's very sporty, very sporty indeed. Fucking love it. Uh, flipping love it. Um, the wind vane's doing all right. I've uh, lifted the tiller up and put it inside a loose bit of the um, string for the traveller. String. Don't shoot me. So now it's nice and quiet. It's a temporary solution where it'll do. Gonna have five minutes down here. There's nothing on the horizon. We've just gone going past uh, Brighton to Port and um, the wind farm to starboard. I'm sort of halfway in between them. So yeah. <laughs> it is very sporty indeed. Like, it just looks flat calm when uh, um, <laughs> when I try and get it on camera, but. <laughs> I'll tell you. I like the idea of big offshore passages and I will do them eventually, but I don't know if I could sleep in this. Probably. I suppose you get tired enough, you just sleep, don't you? <laughs> oh man. Catch you in a bit, I'm chilling out. Okay, first problem of the day, the manual bilge pump won't pump. Um, and the automatic one's just whirring all the time. I can't quite see down in the bilge properly. So I've got water coming in somewhere. Um, still going. I, need to, I think I need to lift the deck off and get in and have a look and see what's going on. Not ideal. Fixed. Uh, something to block the end of the. You can't see anything down there. The end of the manual built from, so I knocked it out. That's working now. The automatic one is just staying on, so I imagine there's something clumped in the end of it and setting off the ultrasound sensor on it. So I've uh, switched it off for the time being so it doesn't burn out. And I'll just manually pump it every 10 minutes or something just in case. I'll start off at 10 minutes and then. If it's okay, extend it to 20 or something. About six miles off Port uh, Celsieville. Oh, it's all fun, isn't it? And this, my reefing lines are definitely going to garrot me the next time I go in the thing. They're like that all the time. I need to sort something out with them. It's all very exciting. In a bit. It is like a completely different day from this morning. Um, Nice and calm and smooth and predictable sea. Got the uh, main out, flogging a bit because there's not much wind. Um, just making my way to Celsius Bill? Yeah. Um, gone past. I ended up a little bit south as I was faffing about trying to get the, uh, the main up, um, which was a pain. Can you see me? The wind has given up, as has the wind van. I've just disconnected the little tab thing. So we're onto this noisy little bugger. Where There he is. <sighs> and we're down to like two knots. And I think most of that's tied. It may well be time for the iron wind. The iron wind is on. I'm a silhouette because I want to get my face out of the sun. I really need some suntan stuff. Um, should make it to Celsius Bill in about 50 minutes. I'll have about 0.8 knots of tide against. Shouldn't really be an issue. Uh, yeah, all good in the hood. I'm a. Uh, Passing Celsi Bill over there. Can't quite see the marker. Got my eyeballs on the navigation boys that you won't be able to see. Uh, and then it's 272 degrees from there to Pembridge. Uh, I reckon I've got about 12 miles to go, something like that. So 
I'm under engine now, it might be two and a half hours maybe. Depends what how much the tide starts kicking. Uh, I think we're making about four knots though, so I know what it said, 12 miles. That's three hours, isn't it? Yeah, it'll be three hours. As long as I'm there before sundown, I'm not bothered. Uh, yeah. All's well. Fingers crossed, touch wood. Coming through the old navigation, boys. You can see it over there. And over there. It's quite a bit of uh, swell and current through here. It's quite exciting. I can't even see the boy now. And there's a uh, tide ripping against me as well, so. No drama if the engine quits, I can either see if I can get enough wind or um, just go with the tide. Yeah. Ripping. I think I might be going backwards. We'll see. I'm in the salt. Uh, I think I'm heading for the right anchorage. Should be about, I think, another couple of hours at the speed I'm going. Not enough wind to sail. Um, yeah, it's quite nice. I had a moment of panic because uh, Savvy Navi shot the bed again. But I've got the um, anchorage plotted in the GPS anyway, so it's not an issue. <coughs> Engine, I'm not even going to mention it just in case. Uh, yeah. Getting a bit stressed about anchoring, but you know, figure it out. We're getting close to the bit that I'm nervous about. I've uh, set the anchor up, it's ready to go on the roller, because uh, mine isn't stowed on a roller, and uh, I've got all the chain out onto deck. Um, so in theory, it's just to find somewhere to drop the bastard. <laughs> I don't know. We'll see how it goes. It's in the anchorage, but uh, the problem I'm having is the sun's setting directly in front of me, so I can't see any geography really on the land because there are some rocks that I need to avoid. So um, next next bit of the video could be me sinking, but we'll see. So I'm not sinking. Um, so I was set up to come in and anchor. However, when I got here, I was in the middle of a field of mooring balls. So. I didn't know what to do. I didn't know whether to just pick up a mooring ball um, to go and anchor somewhere else or what. So in the end, I decided to pick up a mooring ball and then figure it out. Um, yeah, I thought, oh, I'll just thingy and then I'll let the wind blow me across onto it and blah, blah, blah and yada, yada. And then just in a second, I go to pick up, um, oh no, that's not this one. Anyway, on one of them, I went to grab the uh, boat hook and missed grabbing the boat hook, and that split second <laughs> completely stuffed me up, and I missed the mooring ball. Um, but yeah, it's all a learning experience. I was in plenty of water, barely any wind. It was beautiful. Maybe this is the one, or do I get it on the second go? I can't remember. In my mind, it took me 57 attempts to get it. Oh, there it is, I slipped. That was it, <laughs> then missed it. <laughs> uh, all the fun of the fur and none of the laughs. We'll try again. Yeah, I got it on attempt three then, it looks like.
So this time round, I came in too fast. I do get it, but I'm uh, I'm coming in too quick. So I've got too much weight on, and you'll see in a second. I'm really bad at timing this commentary on, and I could have started telling you that in a second. So right now, I'm going too fast. Um, get the ball though. Well, then as soon as I grab it, I almost get pulled off the boat by it, <laughs> trying to slow the boat down. <laughs> Luckily, she's only a little boat, so not that much kinetic energy. And that was that. Um, I walked the ball up forwards. Tied it around a doodad. What are they? Cleat. And chilled out. Um, I was, I'd since found out I was sort of Googling it. And it was... I thought they belonged to Benbridge Harbour. But it turned out they didn't. Um, it must. They must be private sailing club uh, mooring balls or something like that. was that my first day sailing I think it was almost 12 hours on the water um, I ended up ditching the mooring ball uh, just before sunset <coughs> squeeze in one and um, dropping anchor a bit further in and I stayed there for an entire day with swells directly onto my beam um, it felt like I was rolling so much that the uh, tow rails were going underwater but I was too exhausted to do anything because within 10 minutes of me ending this video I was asleep uh, and apart from moving the boat I stayed that way until about 10am the next day <laughs> I think I had sunstroke really should get um, sunscreen you know what I'm like with words. I don't know words. Uh, so yeah, that was it. The first day sail. Crazy. Absolutely crazy. There were moments of sheer panic where I thought, I've just run out of experience here. But all was well. Turns out, you can just do stuff if you like, set your mind to it. So that is it. Um, I'm devastated about the audio quality. I wanted this to be a really good video it's probably not but such is life um, next week I motor through the Solent <sighs> see you later